Hi and welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today we're going to look at the Material UI dialog component. And normally it pops up in the middle of the screen, but I've got it positioned up here. Um, so I've done some, I've positioned two different ways actually uh, to get it in the same spot and I'll go through both. But um, one uses fixed positioning and then one uses the flex system. So one other thing that I'll go through is the sizing of the dialog box. We can make it the full screen width and there's a couple other built-in uh, width options that we can choose from. So stick around and uh, see how you do that. All right, here we are with a material UI dialog that just is um, very bare bones, no props being passed in yet that are affecting the size or position. So let's go take a look at it. I've got some background set up. It's a dialog very similar to what's in one of the examples in the material UI docs, but you can see the core of it, the most important thing is this dialog um, component right here. There's some subcomponents, but we're not gonna set any positioning on them or sizing on them because it's really all about this dialog, which is the top level component in terms of our code. Um, it can be a little tricky to actually target the top level element in the DOM. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first we're gonna start with some of the some of the sizing. So uh, the first one and kind of simplest that I want to mention is full screen and it defaults to false, but if you just set it like that, then that's actually setting it to true. And so you can see here that it is what it says it is. The, uh, the kind of masking gray modal background is not visible. It's actually still there in the DOM and I have a link to an article that's kind of a, uh, it's the same content as this, but you can copy the code or uh, see a link to a code sandbox with working example in that doc, in that article that I wrote. And um, I also dig into the DOM some in it, so you can see some screenshots of the DOM. But the modal is actually still in existence; it's just set to hidden. And so that was kind of interesting to me um, because they didn't really need it there. So anyway, when it's full screen, the dialog takes up the full screen, and um, Seems like something you'd want to use sparingly, but it's an option if you want it. So the next one I want to talk about is max width. There are several sizes, like small, well you can see them here, the large, medium, extra large, extra small. So let's set it to large, see what happens here. So you can see it's taking up quite a bit of the room, or quite a bit of space on here. Now I'm actually going to pair that with the full width prop. So you can see that the full width prop actually kind of interacts with the max width that gets set. So let's take a look at that with small getting set. So you can see it there, I'll remove full width, and see what happens. Nothing really changed with it. So what that means, the full width prop is actually saying, okay, use all the space available to the maximum width set by the max width prop. So it, um, it can be a little bit hard to on the small or extra small sizes to really see it having any effect. But you can see it on the larger, uh, the medium and up. Um, another thing is that the max width is actually constrained by uh, the margin that's being set, or in our case, the default margin. So that's a pretty good overview of the three uh, width or sizing props. And of course you can always impact the sizing by uh, passing in styling. So what we're going to do next is we're going to style this um, using MUI version 5, the version that just came out last month. This is October 2021 when I'm recording this. So there's a new SX prop that's, it's actually both an API in and of itself and it's a prop. So um, pretty straightforward in what it does. It, it looks like this and you can pass in, you can pass in um, does not look like that. It looks like that, just like any other prop, but you can pass in values like background color. And so it allows you to pass in CSS values. You no longer need make styles and use styles and the extra import for make styles. So it's really pretty slick. I like it a lot. Um, however, one tricky thing with the dialogue is that the dialogue, the dialogue component is composed of multiple DOM elements. And I'm not even talking about the contents of the dialogue. I mean, this dialogue component itself is composed of multiple DOM elements. And so it can be difficult 
to target them precisely. Uh, you just need a, the proper nested selectors. So if I just use the SX prop here, like I was just doing, that would target, that would apply styling to the topmost element in the DOM. But that's not necessarily what we want to do. So there's another prop called paper props. So what this does is, by default, um, the element that we can see here is actually material UI paper. So let's look at the um, dev tools here. So material UI components are ultimately translated to typical HTML elements and classes applied to them. So the paper component is actually a div element with MUI paper dash root applied to it. So when we set paper props here, then that's going to be setting, that's going to be passing props into that paper component. So if we set SX, then that's going to pass values, that's going to pass styling directly to um, that element that we were just looking at. So um, I can set the width, I can set the height this way, like I mentioned a minute ago. And let's take a look at that. So pretty crazy styling right there, but that if you didn't want to use a prop, um, if you didn't want to use the full screen or max width, etc., and if you want to adjust the height, then this would be a good way to do it right here. So uh, we can move on to positioning then, and the positioning can be accomplished once again with this SX prop. And I'll show two ways to do it. Um, I'll start with using fixed positioning. And the syntax when you're passing things to paper props can be a little bit complex. So paper props, ultimately it's got wrapping curly braces around whatever you're passing to the prop. What you're passing to the prop is these inner curly braces that you're passing an object. And so within that object, then we have an SX object. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit complex, but um, let's set some values. So like I mentioned, we want to get position fixed and I'm going to get that on these paper, on this paper props. So it'll be on that um, paper element or on that div element with the paper class applied to it. So let's get it up in the top left corner like I initially showed. And we'll take a look at what that looks like. So it's a little bit far from there. So let's set margin zero. So this is shorthand here. Uh, it ties into the theme. There is a list of margin values. And so the zero value translates to zero PX. This M2 value translates to 16 PX. That's one that I know off the top of my head. So anyway, we'll take a look at that and we see that it is in fact closer to the top and the left. Um, so pretty interesting, uh, pretty, if you are shown the syntax then that one's a pretty straightforward way to position your dialogue component. And I mentioned, I wanna look at the DOM again. So this is the element that's getting some of the styling applied to it. So you may be able to see that um, those values on there. So here we go, here's our fixed position. Top is 10px, left is 10px. So I mentioned it can be difficult to target the appropriate um, element sometimes, and this is why. Look, we have dialog. We have, so dialog is, a, is composed of multiple elements, like I mentioned. Um, and so here's an element that's part of the composition. Here's that backdrop. I, I think I called it a modal before, but I meant to say the backdrop. And then here's the actual container um, that we're looking at right here. All right, so this is the one that's visible, that paper component. And then there's a container around it that we can't really see. So um, quite a few different uh, elements in there, all from, ultimately all just from this dialog component right here. These nested elements, or these nested components are farther down. So there's the, the, the title there and the content and so on. But they don't really impact our styling. So that was one way to do the styling. So let's take a look at another. 
and the other one will use the flex positioning. So there's actually the default styling on this dialog uses flex positioning. So um, what this means is that we actually have to do a little bit of adjustment at the top. And I'll comment this out for now. We'll end up using these paper props, but if we're gonna do it this way, then we'll actually have a little bit of interplay between the topmost element and the paper element, the div with the paper class on it, which I'll just call paper element. So let's get our proper selectors in here. So this will actually say, okay, our top level element in the DOM, go and find the child element that has this class on it. So it's not really the top level element that we're changing, that we're adjusting the styling on. It's actually that container that I just mentioned in the DOM. So we'll set the justify content on it and set it to flex start and set the align items. And once again, we'll say flex start. And let's take a look at what that looks like so far. So that got us to where we were before, um, except that we still have margin on there. So we can't strip off the margin at this level. We have to go once again into these paper props. We could, if we wanted to, we could add um, another selector here and select the uh, MUI paper dash root element. But why do that when we already have this paper props handily built for us? So I'll just go in and I'll set, I'll strip this out, except for that M0. And there we go, up in the top corner there. Um, so let's, uh, I forgot, I actually set the top to 10 and the left to 10. So we weren't exactly in the corner there. So let's put those back on. And there we go, that's exactly how it was before. So pretty cool there. So just out of curiosity, I'm actually gonna comment this one out. And so we're here, it's a little hard to tell, but if we strip this off, then it bumps it just a little bit. So that top and left are taking effect, whether um, we've justified all the way up to the top left using flex start and, uh, and um, for justify content and align items. So if you want to see the Material UI version 4, the make styles and use styles method of setting the dialog sizing or uh, position, then you can take a look at that article that I'll link to in the show details, in the video details. And um, it's basically the same kind of syntax. You just have it in make styles. So um, the SX is just a little bit more concise syntax. So I hope that this was helpful and um, please consider subscribing. It really motivates me to keep making these videos.